And away we go, Chris Van Ekren. Tees it up for Purdue, and the Huskies will start at their own 25-yard line. Well, Randy, not just a coaching change, a quarterback change as well. Steven Krajewski, the sophomore, will get the start. Jack Zergiotis will start on the sideline. You know, very similar size-wise. Here's a young man, though, though, that can move around a little bit better, and I think that's the main reason that, you know, new head coach Lou Spanos decided to go in that direction. He and the staff decided they wanted somebody more mobile and somebody that could be more of a threat with the run. Kevin Mensa lined up in the backfield. Huskies go trips in the slot on first down. And the give is to a man off a couple of 1,000-yard rushing seasons, Kevin Mensa. George Karloftis making the stop. And in terms of the Purdue defense, Karloftis, Randy, one of the top defensive ends in the nation. But this is the line that's going to have to block against him. Yeah, Chase Lunt, the right tackle, is going to need some help. You don't handle a Karloftis by yourself. He's going to need backs chipping and guards hitting. Krajewski to throw on second down, has his man complete to Cameron Hairston, and he's knocked down inside Purdue territory. Nice job with that quick roll, and they go to the area right there behind the linebackers in front of the safety trying to adjust and get over there. That was a nice throw. Flip them at midfield. First down handoff, Kevin Mensa to the outside where he's guided out of bounds by Jalen Alexander. Let's meet that Purdue defense we spoke about beginning with Carl Loftus on the end. Well, the Purdue defense is going to see a little bit different offense out of UConn. One, they're not going to be trying to go really, really fast, but they're going to try to spread them out a little bit. They're going to try to get the receivers out, give them more of a different look. Nate Carter lined up in the backfield for Connecticut. Blend around. Brian Bruton, the other running back, shakes by a tackle and taken down at the 41-yard line. So the Huskies dial up something different there on second down. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, they're going to need more of a meat and potatoes approach, but why not try everything? You've got to have reverses. You're going to have, you might even see reverse passes in this game. There's no telling. Brian Bruton, freshman, small, fast, scat guy. Third and one from the Purdue 41. And they give to Carter and not much. Branson Dean the first to get there for Purdue. Yeah, they meet that one in the backfield. You got Karloftis coming into the backfield. It's fourth down and it's short. I think, A, you try to get them to jump off here. But, I mean, what do you got to lose if you're, you're UConn? But, you know, I think this is a spot to punt, personally. Flag on the play, bad snap, and we await the penalty. False start. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Christian Haynes, a sophomore from Maryland. Well, that makes the decision a little bit yes. easier. Fourth and shot, short goes from, to fourth and medium. That's the, the punt team waiting to happen. Here it comes. Second thoughts against the Purdue defense that had three fourth down stops last week against Oregon State. No, well, not a bad start for UConn, though. I mean, they, they showed you a little bit of everything. Got a nice big pass play. Had some good consistent runs. Aiden Kerr, the freshman from New South Wales, Australia. His sixth part of the year, not a deep one by any stretch, spiraling out of bounds near the 20-yard line. That's where Purdue will start its first drive of their first road game here in 2021. In Phoenix for that bowl game, that was uh, quite a sight to see all those OU and UConn fans. Purdue first series. Jack Plummer, sophomore quarterback, stepping up, looking, tripped up, and brought down at the 15-yard line by Ian Swenson, the linebacker. Didn't play last week, back in a big way. Attacking from the get-go, they're getting into the gaps. Swenson gets up the field and just trips up Plummer. They're going to need that kind of effort defensively. You can't sit back and watch this offense. Lou Spanos knows he's got to attack Plummer. Five-yard loss from the 15-yard line. Xander Horvath up the middle picks up about six. 
Let's meet the Purdue quarterback, Jack. Do not call me Jake Plummer. Unrelated, but Jack's got skills too. He really does. This young man can spin the ball. Only a junior. He's got all the throws that are necessary, and he's got two really good quarterback coaches in Jeff and Brian Brown. Nickel look for UConn with Miles Bell. Plummer to throw. Pocket collapsing. Gets free, but can't get much. Wrestled down at his feet by Jackson Mitchell, the quarterback of this UConn defense. Well, the word you need to hear out of, from this defense is relentless. Look down the field. Where are you going to go? You're not going to go there. That's not open. Look at the protection. It's not bad, but as it breaks down, Plummer really has nowhere to go. Couldn't, couldn't throw the ball out there to anybody and really had nowhere to run. Three plays for the Boilermakers. They lose a yard. On to punt for Purdue, Jack Ansel, the freshman, also from Australia. Dylan Marion tails back and will step out. Picks up a yard. Marion last week with two receiving touchdowns for the Huskies. Scoreless in the early going. When it comes to defensive end George Karlafis in Purdue football, he is that dude. I'm impressed just like everyone else. He's a game breaker, a guy that can do it all. Ask anybody at Purdue or UConn, and they'll tell you he's an impact player, a guy that needs to be accounted for. Every Purdue coach we talked to said he's their best player and hardest worker. He's back in full form. I talked to him this week. He said tough times don't last. Tough people do. All right, Josh, thanks. And he is really happy to be back as Mensa. On first down, taken down at the 38 by Carlottis and Demarge Lewis. And Randy, Carlottis chopping at the bit after COVID and injury kept him to just three games last year. Yeah, this is a guy that's kind of an All-American waiting to happen. And if you watch this attack of UConn, you don't go at this guy very often. But he's got the quickness to catch you if you go away. Nothing doing. Brian Bruden on the outside. And Marvin Grant got to him for Purdue. Now, Randy, the keys to the game for both sides. Well, pretty simple. If you're Purdue, you sort of play your game and don't help UConn. That means no turnovers. Don't do anything silly. And for UConn, you get the ball like this. Stay on the field. They did a decent job the first time moving the ball. You have to do that every single time you get it. Lost a yard there in the last play. Third and 11. Krajewski scampers away. Krajewski sidesteps a tackle to pick up the first down on the boundary. Well, there's a good example of why Lou Spanos and his staff decided to make the, the change and go into Krajewski. He's just got a little bit better wheels. And that's not a bad little hesitation move to buy those last couple yards and guarantee that first down. Marvin Grant's in the Purdue secondary feeling the little hezzy. First down. Fake Krajewski across midfield. So feels the blitz on that last play and scampers for a few more here. Nice job pulling that ball by Krajewski because Karloftis came in there and had the fullback cover. The running back was going to be tackled for about a one-yard loss. On the problem was for Purdue, they didn't have the but he didn't have the ball. Nate Carter lined up in the backfield for Connecticut after a three-yard pickup by Krajewski. Here's Carter. Feels the block and pushed out at the 35-yard line. Ryan Vandermark, the leader of the O-line, creating space. Jalen Alexander with the tackle for Purdue. You know, Josh on the sideline made a note that this is not a trap game, according to Purdue. At this rate, after last week and some of those upsets we saw, this is a semi-trap game right now because I'm not sure how ready Purdue is. A week one filled with a lot of FCS winners as Krajewski on the keeper. Karloftis got to him first for the Boilermakers. Going to be just short, setting up a fourth down. Well, they went they went for it on fourth and about two. So fourth and one, you got to expect it. From the 43 of Purdue, earlier false start on fourth down. Connecticut electing a punt after that. Out of the shotgun. 
The sophomore quarterback, Krajewski, from the state of Georgia. Bobbles the handoff. It's loose. And Purdue is going to take over on the fourth down stop. Jace Medlock unable to secure the handoff. A little trickery there with the tight end coming on the inside. Yeah, you know, sometimes you trick yourself. A lot of moving parts. A lot of possible car ball carriers. One doesn't get it. Second one does, and it never really gets into his, be his belly. And Krajewski has to try to dive on the ball. But at this point, it's not going to matter as to whose ball it's going to be. Like for David Bell, but quite a resume for the junior wide receiver. Randy, last week had eight catches for 134 yards. And in many ways, it was a quiet day because he's that smooth. He's that effective. Coming off a change, do you go to him deep? Stack the line. Go with Xander Horvath on first down. Let's meet the Purdue offense. Horvath, fifth-year man, their top running back behind this offensive line. Yeah, early on, that offensive line had some issues last week, and, and they'll Injury be as good out. as this O-line lets them be. And out for Purdue is Xander Horvath. Had a big day against Oregon State, including an 11-yard touchdown out of the Wildcat. And taking a look at the fifth-year man, the senior for Purdue. Yeah, you really got to hope this, this kid isn't hurt because he could be something pretty good. I mean, this is a guy that's 6'3", 230 in that single back. You saw that formation. I mean, they had him at about seven yards deep. He was like the old I-formation tailback back there. That's a good-sized kid to be using that style of offense with. Well, he wears the number 40. He plays for Purdue, and many liken him to Mike Allstott. Let's take a look on the tackle here from Jackson Mitchell of UConn. Yeah, his, his ankle kind of gets caught underneath him on that tackle. Hopefully he's going to bounce right back. Hey, Ed, how, how do you like these helmets? with the railroad tracks in the, in, over the top. Different than the gold ones. Yeah, I'm thinking, I, when they first came out, I went, what, no gold helmets? It's a Randy Cross prerequisite, right? <laughs> it's a King Doru in it running back. This is David Bell. Bell turns the corner in open space. And Bell across the 30-yard line for Purdue. So some trickery as Payne Durham cleared some room for David Bell. Watch the defense and them react this way. And when they react Injury to out. the offense's right, with David Bell, gives you a little idea. This guy can scoop pretty good. I mean, he may not be on the stopwatch of 4-3, but generally speaking, watching him on film, he kind of runs faster than whoever's chasing. Player down for Connecticut. On the defensive side, it's Ian Swenson, the junior linebacker. Swenson didn't play last week against Holy Cross. But, Bell, we spoke to Brian Brom, Jeff's brother, offensive coordinator for Purdue, and he compared his capabilities being in the molds of Jerry Rice. Now, you can certainly comment on that, Randy Cross. Yeah, that's a, that's a heck of a comparison. That's, that's setting your sights pretty high. <laughs> but he's a guy, and, and there's Brom right there. Bell is a guy that will work like crazy can run really well and has that ability to separate. First and 10 from the Connecticut 28. Top play action. Plummer to the outside. Complete. Couple of extra yards. Out of the tackle goes Milton Wright and stumbling out of bounds for Purdue. And so far, not much action, but getting into the red zone here, you got to think that Brom in this offense will start giving a look to their tight end, Durham, number 87. Lined up on the right side. Look at the Connecticut defense here. Second and two for Purdue. Eight-yard pickup for Milton Wright. King Doru stays in as the running back. Three wide for Purdue. It's Doru. Trying to bounce it off the tackle. And gets inside the 20. Kavon Jones, K.K. Jones, the explosive defensive end from East Hartford High School, two miles from the stadium with the tackle. We saw Horvath on his way to the tunnel. 
Hopefully that's just for a little bit better, tighter ankle tape job, and he can come back into this ball game. Two tight ends, Derman Miller. From the 17. Man in motion is right. Play fake. Looking to the end zone. Durham turns his back. Has the football and a touchdown. Payne Durham with his third in the last two weeks. Yeah, this young man's going to be a heck of a problem for most teams they face. He's 6'5, he's about 255. He got a little pick action, intentional or unintentional. That really opened up Durham, and he was able to just sort of backwalk his way into the end zone, waiting for that ball. But there'll be a lot of teams at the next level that'll be real interested at the, in this young man. Payne Durham had a 50-yard touchdown last week. Mitchell Finneran transfer from Sanford in Alabama with the extra point. And the Boilermakers with the first strike in East Hartford. Remember, it started with the turnover on downs with that bad handoff and you pay the price because this Purdue offense will make you pay a touchdown and today's going to be a great reminder to a lot of people about that whole never forget as for this one Purdue coming off first score of the game shallow kick from Ben Eakman Devante Houston brings it out for Connecticut hit his own man keeps going out across the 30 yard line and that's where Connecticut will bring it's offense out of the field and start its latest drive. First 12 plays for Connecticut, Randy, have featured 10 on the ground and two passing plays for Krajewski. You would think they, got, they have just got to be able to threaten with the pass. That's something they haven't done so far. One long pass play. A lot of that was due to Cam Allen, the safety, I think, kind of lost track of where the receiver was. Well, they go empty here. Connecticut with five wide, three on the left side. Nate Carter shifting into the backfield. Producing his first start of the year. Came on late in the fourth quarter at Fresno State two weeks ago. Pass play, locks it up. Man-on-man -man coverage, pass behind, incomplete. And Corey Trice with the strong coverage downfield against Cameron Hairston. That was a nice job by Trice. Just staying and staying. A little bit of tugging. But if there's no flag, it was a good, good technique. Now, Randy, this guy, Jack Zergiotis, attempted 41 passes against Holy Cross last week. There were three touchdowns, but also three interceptions. And the move to Krajewski. Wanted to utilize his feet. Mobile quarterback, Krajewski. Maybe not the same level of arm as the native of Montreal and Zergiotis, but change in the coaching position, change in the culture, change in quarterback. Yeah, you know, it's probably got partially has to do with Kajuski can run the run a little bit better than Zer Zergiotis, but also the, it's those interceptions. And you've already seen why you don't want to give a team like Purdue the ball. Third and six. Looking over the middle, checks it down and completes it to move the sticks. Ja'Kai Gill, who's getting more snaps because Cam Ross injured his foot and the first down catch. Huskies going no huddle. Nate Carter out across the logo and into Purdue territory. Chris Jefferson making a heck of a hit there coming up from that safety position. That's being assertive and doing it with your shoulder pads the right way. Got his jersey untucked there on the left shoulder. The senior from Euclid, Ohio. From midfield, first down, rather second down and six. Two receiver stats, left slot, and the give again to Carter. Nate Carter fighting, upended, pushed down by Carl Loftus. He just took him right out of the air and put him back on his feet. This is called snatching a grown man. Right there. That shows some pretty good torque and a little bit of strength there by Carl Loftus. 
But the good news for UConn is that happened four or five yards down the field. Leads to a third and two. The big man, Robert Burns, transfer from Miami. They wanted a bigger running back out of the transfer portal, and Burns showing why with the first down pickup. When he was at Miami, he started Robert's Donuts. I wonder <laughs> if he shares donuts with his old line. I'm sure they'd be appreciative if he did. Grad student, very entrepreneurial, has a number of interests, nonprofit, and of course, the Donut Man. From the 43 yard line of Purdue. Take the give. Krajewski avoids a tackle from Trice looking downfield through the hands of his man Burns. The escape, but just missed him. And the coverage off the pressure from Trice. Well, he avoids the sack, and then he makes a, a pretty good little touch pass right over the top there that maybe should have been ca caught. But if we're doing maybes, maybe he should have brought that ball down and just ran and taken the yards he could get there instead of exposing the ball to a possible turnover. Yeah, the numbers on Kajuski, Randy, 3 of 5 for 34 yards. He's gained 18 on the ground. Brian Bruden is the running back, and Purdue reading it perfectly against Kajuski as Jefferson got there with another strong stop on this drive this defense if they can live in that area behind the line of scrimmage it's what they want it's who they are and that's called living in the backfield right there not buying the, the eye candy in the face Boilermakers under the third defensive coordinator in three years Brad Lambert now leading their defense and a quick out to Carter snuffed out by Purdue to Marcus Mitchell the defensive end from Thibodeau, Louisiana Yeah, goal number one if you're if you're UConn Offensively is kind of keep up the work you've had, but you got to finish a drive You get you've got to get past the 50 in field goal range get at least a three on the board you can't keep punting the ball against Purdue. It will have very negative results. And the drive ends in no man's land again, too. Just inside of midfield. Hayden Kerr, another punt. Jackson Anthem calling for the fair catch. He'll take it for Purdue with 1-12 left in this first quarter. Last time the Boilermakers offense was on the field. It ended with Payne Durham getting into the end zone. Well, I showed you your two best players. They showed you a little bell on a little bit of an end around. And then at the end, to, to sort of finish things off, they showed you Payne Durham at tight end in the red zone making you pay. Last week against Oregon State, Jeff Brom's team had two 100-yard receivers. And Durham and Bell. Man in motion, T.J. Sheffield. Off the sweep. Just shy of the 25-yard line. That little bat forward, so that'll go in the books as a pass. But I love the imagination of this offense and the way they sort of change things up. They keep the defense. If you're going to attack them, and trust me, UConn needs to attack, you've got to be sure your linebackers have your backs if you're a D-line. Seven-yard pickup. Jeff Fields didn't play last week for the lower body injury. This is Dylan Downing, retro freshman, transfer from UNLV, from Carmel, Indiana, and Travis Jones, one of the top guys on the Connecticut defensive line, in on the stop. Twenty-three seconds left in this first quarter. We're goal one for UConn right now: start a drive off or start a series off with a negative play. Don't get behind the sticks consistently. Payne Durham in motion, shifts, play fake. Plummer escapes the tackle, flips it, complete to Downing. Dylan Downing lowers his shoulder. And out past the 35-yard line, Luau Uguac, native the of end Edmonton, of the Alberta. First quarter. Start of the second quarter here on CBS Sports Network. Purdue, 7-0 lead at Connecticut. Step up with Warner Ladder and help football coaches find a cure for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Visit coach to curemd.org. Earlier, Xander Horvath, Purdue's running back, going down to the first quarter for an update. Let's go down to Josh Martin. Josh. Thanks, Ed. 
Xander Horvath running back walked off the field to the locker room under his own power. It looked like a lower extremity injury. He had his cleat off, waiting to hear back on his status. Currently being evaluated. I'll let you know when we have more information. All right, Josh, thanks so much. So the second quarter begins with the Boilermakers at their own 38-yard line. First down and 10. Plummer keeps it in his own chest and misses Durham, who is wide open down the seam. And Purdue unable to capitalize off the play action. Man, Durham was wide open. Look at him. He'll be coming from the right side of the screen right at you. He's got nothing but air around it. You get him the ball there, it's a minimum 20 to An eligible receiver downfield. Offense number 87. Five-yard penalty. First down. So the flag calls on Durham. Well, may, I guess somebody covered him up. Obviously, there had to be a, another receiver on that side that covered him up. Butch made the tight end and held. Moving back five yards to the 33. They're second down for the Boilermakers. Plummer, play fake again. Plenty of time. Good coverage downfield. Has to sling it out, and it's broken up by Omar Fort. And the Huskies getting it done downfield with their coverage. Well, the reason there's no one to throw to is you got to credit UConn had, did a pretty nice job of coverage. Because Bell, he was running free for a short period of time, but the coverage was there. That's why you saw the quarterback have to tuck that thing down. Plummer couldn't throw it to him over the middle. Would have been a pick. Another play pick. Plummer, time again. Jones chasing. Flips it. Complete for a first down. Finds Brock Thompson crossing on the routes. And the Boilermakers move the chains as Plummer kept the play alive. Yeah, nice job by Plummer. Avoiding the pressure, something he did on a regular basis earlier in the game last week against Oregon State. He gets a little hit from behind, but he'll trade those nice gains out for a hit. Got a guy chasing him in Travis Jones. Chuck Bednarik Award watch list, the junior, and down the road in New Haven. From the 49 to the outside, Jackson Anthrop. At the edge, it has Purdue inside Connecticut territory to the 41-yard line. Stopped by Diamond Harrell, the senior safety around California. Yeah, don't forget the coverage or lack thereof on Durham. That last pass where they overthrew him, because they will go back to that. It may be on the right side when they do it, but nothing that was that wide open is, is worth leaving alone. To your point, Randy, two tight ends, Durham and Garrett Miller. This is Downing, scampering, breaks free, and is stopped at the 30-yard line. Hardwig and Eric Miller, two of the linemen clearing space for Purdue. Yeah, nice job here. You start and then you cut, and there's a good job being done up front. Look at the linemen. They got bodies on bodies, and as long as you're covering up bodies, it makes the running back's job a lot easier to start one direction and then cut back against it. From the 30, quick out. It's Bell with room. Bell avoids another tackle. Trying to turn the corner. Avoids another one. David Bell into the end zone. And putting on a clinic for the touchdown. Wow, and any questions on the ability of this young man? I mean, you make that many people miss, he'll come from the left side of your screen when he eventually crosses the field. But you had one guy had a shot. Two guys have a shot. It won't get any higher than two because by the time the third guy comes along, he's almost basically in the end zone. 16th career receiving touchdown, but he had to put in work with the help of those missed tackles. Purdue, 14, Connecticut, nothing. Welcome back here to Connecticut. David Bell's touchdown, something to see. Watch this now as he starts going across the field. Now there's the first tackle, but the bodies you have to watch are his guys, because he's going to get some blocks here, and that's faith. That, your guys know that if you get a little block, he'll give you the yak. And if you can trade two blocks for about 20 yards of yak, 
That's a good uh, good rate return. He's a guy, and talking to Brian Brom, the offensive coordinator, and even some of his teammates, Jack Plummer in particular, he makes it look so easy. At times you forget what he does in a game, but when he's covered, and there were a lot of guys who tried to bring him down, David Bell can find a way. He's really dangerous. Let's see what Connecticut can do to answer. Down 14 nothing. Lou Spano, something that he's addressed with his team. We spoke to him about it, Randy. The missed tackles, another big play allowed by the UConn defense. Yeah, and one of the other things he talked about was the offense finishing. Getting in a position where they're doing some things well, but you have to finish. And right now, this offense, for no other reason that their, their defense needs a blow, they need to finish this drive. They need this drive to result in points. Stay on the field and get some points. Mensa back in off the play fake. Krajewski over the middle. Double coverage. Complete. Haran Morriso with the sliding catch inside Purdue territory. Going deep over the top. Nice job by Krajewski just dropping this into a spot. Because he's got some company. Not like he's by himself back there and just running wide open. Mensa. Quick to the line and bunched up by the Purdue defense. But we've seen this at a couple times already where the offense looks like, hey, they're doing pretty good or they actually have gotten past the 50-yard line. No, this has to be points. It's got to be points. Either a field goal, I mean, ideally a touchdown. But stay on the field and get some points. Second and nine. They're at the Purdue 34-yard line. Kudrzewski. Pocket collapsing, and nobody home. Hit hard and dropped by George Karloftis. No surprise. Well, Karloftis coming off that left defensive end. He has got really nice technique. He uses his hands extremely well. And, you know, if you're Connecticut, you've got to get your, your right tackle some help. you got to give Chase Lunch some help. He can't do that by himself, I don't think, consistently. Young man from Greece, Karloftis, 6'4", 275. UConn running Nate Carter here, shy of the 30-yard line. But this, coming back to your point, you get the great pass play downfield. Can you do something with it? If you're the Connecticut offense, fourth down already and seven. And they're going to bring out Joe McFadden for a 50-yard field goal try. Luke Spano said 53, 57. If it was practice, this guy's got a heck of a leg and can do it. Let's see if he can hit a 50 in a game. Now, Krajewski, the holder still, even as the starting quarterback, and this kick, no good. All right, across, when you think of quarterbacks, you think of those from West Lafayette, from Len Dawson to Bob Greasy, and a host of others, including Gary Danielson, our own guy, Jim Everett, and of course, Drew Brees putting it over the top 20 years ago. Yeah, he, but even back then when Drew Brees was here, I don't know if they passed the ball more than they do now. This is a passing circus. Gary Danielson in Annapolis today for Air Force and Navy. As Purdue up the gut with King Doru, but Randy, you think about the quarterback use in college football. BYU had Mann, Steve Young, Ty Detmer, Stanford, Elway, Plunkett, Andrew Luck. Yeah, there's there's a few of them out there, quarterback-wise. Notre Dame has some pretty good ones, too. Second down and three from the Purdue 39-yard line. Jack Plummer. Out of the shotgun, it's Dolu once again, avoiding a few tackles, stumbling right to midfield for a first down. For more on Xander Horvath, let's go down to Josh Martin. Xander Horvath just came out from the locker room with a boot on his left leg, and he's in street clothes, no pads. He's icing his ankle at the end of the bench. The team says he's doubtful to return, but he looks like he's out for the game. All right, Josh, thanks. And that is such a key member of this Purdue team. Randy trying to open things up with their run game. Yeah, how often do you see guys get their sort of leg or ankle trapped underneath them and get bent back? Hopefully he's going to be okay. First down here from the 50. 
So they run Dolo again. And from Amarillo, Texas. And the Huskies in the right spot to bring him down. So King Doru, the junior, who led Purdue two years ago with over 450 rushing yards and five touchdowns. Getting some good blocking, Doru was up front. I mean, that's one thing about Payne, tight end Payne Durham that I like the most about him, besides his receiving skills. He doesn't mind getting his, ha getting his hands a little dirty. He will block. He will ragdoll defenders. This guy's got some skills. Connecticut goes with the nickel look. Miles Bell in over the middle. There's Durham. Across the 30 and wrestled down by Jalen Farrell, the sophomore from Miami, Florida. But the Boilermakers moving the sticks again. Yeah, if at first you don't succeed, go ahead and hit him on the other side. Durham running wide open again. And Jeff Brom will continually start popping the ball. If you let that tight end get in behind those linebackers into that air in front of the safeties, you'll see that on a regular basis. Durham told us, looks up to guys like Tony Gonzalez, Rob Gronkowski, most recently George Kittle. I like the standards. Not bad. Clever to throw, avoids the pressure, turns, looks, and completes it. Jackson Anthrop taken down on the edge by Ian Swenson after DJ Morgan brought the pressure against Plummer. Watch Plummer here. He's going to hit the X button right there. Gets a little spin move working. That was a pretty move by Plummer. That's a way you can make a defender look pretty silly. I don't care how good the defender is. You do those quick spin moves, and they've got nowhere to go. That's what Jeff Brom was most impressed with last week against Oregon State, how Plummer kept plays alive with his feet. And up again, one-on-one. -on -one. Huskies recovering, and he's brought down about a yard shy of the goal line by Jalen Farrell for UConn. Yeah, Anthrop almost gets back-to-back -back weeks with a touchdown there. Just about took that one in. Another really nice play design with that quick fake action with the handoff. Anthrop coming in motion and then getting the ball to him out on the outside where he really had one guy to beat. You beat that one defender, it's going to be a touchdown. From the one, second and goal. King Doru into the end zone. Touchdown, Purdue. And a three-score lead here at East Hartford. King Doru didn't see much in the way of uh, defenders until he gets into Injury the Injury timeout. Zone. Look at the blocking up front. We got a, we've got one guy down. We've got a defender down on the ground. Garrett Miller, the sophomore for Purdue. Yeah, it's a bowler maker. You know, Randy, last thing you want to see here on the road, you lose Horvath, likely for the game, as we heard Josh Martin report. And now Garrett Miller is down for the Boilermakers, the sophomore, Round Rock, Texas. You ever hear coaches make comments about, you know, we can't worry about that, that's not in our control. Number one on a coach's list of things that are out of their control that can really give a season a tailspin are injuries. You know, look through college football, look through the professional ranks. When you start getting those injuries and they come in clumps, it really doesn't matter. I mean, no one's deep enough that they can survive multiple starters going out this early. Just the second game of the year. Remember, next week, it's Notre Dame at Soldier Field. And we haven't even scratched the surface on what's to come in the Big Ten West as they help Garrett Miller back to the sideline. Well, Miller, the backup tight end, just kind of gets rolled up on the back side there. Half the offensive line on the right ends up on the back of his legs. Yeah, how many seasons can you say you're going to play at Wrigley Field and Soldier Field and you're a college team in the same year? Too much time. That doesn't even happen. From the Monsters of the Midway to the Ivy of Wrigleyville. And Finneran for the extra point, 21-0 Boilermakers. 21-0 Purdue coming off an eight-play, 68-yard scoring drive. Any with Dolu in the end zone. Well, coming up on the halftime report, powered by Ram Trucks. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, and Kevin Carter from our CBS Sports Network studio in New York. Look around the country, highlights and scores.
first half stats and analysis and right now it's Randy's storylines well you got the piggy bank with the NIL but how about that right there Oregon taking out Ohio State expansion is a huge story I mean expansion is not done you still have teams that are going to be jumping and going and paying fees to get out earlier and everything else but the West Coast football out in the Pac-12 seems to be back is that a smile I see from the California guy, the former UCLA Bruin. Yes, it's bobbled in the end zone by Bruton. And UConn will take the touchback. Well, you got to enjoy him while you got him. Yes. And that, that game against Louis LSU, I couldn't decide if it said more about LSU or UCLA. So we'll, we'll see how they, how they sort of answer that and back it up. But Oregon beating Ohio State, Huge. that's as big a win as a West Coast team has had in a long time. I mean, on the road, it's been since I, UCLA, I think, went to Texas and beat Texas under Rick Neuheisel. Wow. That might have been the last time on the road you saw that big of a win. Week two, no less. Krajewski. <laughs> Off the play fake. Looking to the outside. Nate Carter's there. Couldn't sidestep his man and get out of bounds. Brian Bruden, in fact, the freshman with the catch out of the backfield. Now there's an example of a ball. That, that ball right there to Bruton, that's got to be on his outside shoulder, outside hand. So when he catches it, he can just run straight ahead. That ball was thrown on the backside. He had to make that spin move. By the time they did, the defense had caught up. Result, no game. Nate Carter lined up in the backfield on second down. On the ground, Connecticut. It's gained 44 yards. Aggressive early. Now it's Kajewski with the toss. Carter trying to turn the corner. He was quickly stuffed out by Purdue. O.C. Brothers, the sophomore linebacker, want to get him more reps this week, and Brothers with the stop. Yeah, if, you, if you're trying to get the edge on Purdue, I mean, take a look at this defense. You see Carl Loftus coming back into the game. This is a, a, a defense that can run. This is not a big, meaty, beefy kind of a defense. This thing, go, this defense goes sideline to sideline. Krajewski slings it out. Catch made by Gill. Splits a tackle. And he's dragged down in the open field. Chris Jefferson may have saved a touchdown after the catch and run there from Ja'Kai Gill. Look at the jumble they threw into. How do you come through there? Nobody touched him. Jay Rose clearing space. Carter here spinning and brought down just shy of midfield Marvin Grant, the sophomore, with a stop for the Boilermakers. Nice job by Rose on that last play. Just maintaining contact defensively. If you can maintain contact on defensive guys, you can gain positive yards. Because even if they try to come off and make a tackle, you're going to push them down the field, and it's going to be three, four, five yards. Four-yard pickup, second and six. And false start here are the Huskies. False start. Offense number one. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's a wide out Keelan Marion. Remember the, the key, one of the keys to the game for Purdue, I said don't help UConn. But right now UConn's helping Purdue on a pretty regular basis. It's 21 nothing. The only downside for the Boilermakers, the injuries. Darren Miller, tight end Xander Horvath, both leaving already in this game. Second and 11, Mensa. Yeah, Kevin Mensa, just shy of the line of scrimmage. Lawrence Johnson in on the stop for Purdue and starting to really close out against the UConn running game. Well, keep an eye on number five, Karloftis, the left defensive end on this play. He'll be going against the right tackle, the Richard freshman, Lunt. Third and ten. Connecticut four wide. Karloftis pressuring, ball loose. Almost intercepted as it died out in front of Marvin Grant. And Karloftis with the hit on Krajewski as he got it away. It wasn't clean. It wasn't immediate. But look at the edge. You know, the key for a defender, especially a rusher, 
and this might sound weird, but you only want to deal with half a man. If you can deal with half a man, you can get the edge on somebody. And Karloftis, so far today, most of the time, has only been dealing with half of an offensive tackle. Chase Lunt, the freshman, as you mentioned, on the right side of the line. Aiden Kerr, another punt here for Connecticut. Panther back to receive for Purdue. And the catch made just inside the 20-yard line. Man, how about that win? Unreal. Let's take a look at the AP poll powered by Ram Trucks. And yes, you're going to have a shakeup. Ohio State upset by Oregon. Wow. Well, it's not too early when you start seeing some of these wins early on for teams that, you know, let's be honest, they're underdogs. Oregon was an underdog, but the big dog, like Ohio State, goes out. Does that open the door for somebody else in the play? Purdue being thrown 18 yard line. And they put a down. down. And then zero here in the corner. And likely out for the rest of the game for Purdue. Well, remember, too, what Horvath kind of has. This is a guy who can run outside, inside, was a good receiver out of the backfield, was a very willing blocker. So that's the that's the role that Downing's got to figure out a way to sort of take on and augment. Off the fake, Jack Plummer to the outside. Sidestep up the sideline, and Bell out of bounds, making UConn defenders miss. Had the earlier touchdown from east to west and right here up the sideline north to south. See, the, the thing about Bell is he kind of makes it look easy. I mean, he doesn't look like he's going so smooth. When he makes somebody miss, the defender looks like he's going full speed. Bell looks like he's got it at about 80% idle. David Bell Jr. from Indianapolis came in tied for 12th in Purdue history. With a touchdown today, he's tied for 10th now, 16th for his career. Stick with Downing, crashing into the line for a couple of more yards. Picks up four. Yeah, Jeff and Brian Brom, the two quarterbacks, their whole careers. And once you're a quarterback, you're a quarterback in life. Uh, they're the reason that Farmer came to Purdue. He looked at those guys, and he knew that the kind of coaching he'd get from Jeff Brown and Brian Brown could set him up for the next level. Play fake, Plummer with time, walks it, Bell wide open. David Bell with a block. Stays on his feet, extends. Did he get the ball there? Touchdown. Unbelievable. Brock Thompson sprung him loose, and Bell did the rest. Well, somehow you kind of lose track of a guy like Bell coming across your defense. And then it's effort and blocks. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Watch the ball. He hasn't stepped out. That's over the goal line. That was a great call. What you have to look for is as he's efforting, does the foot go out? Does the hand go out? Couldn't see either one of those, but you can see the ball get right there. As soon as the tip of that ball crossed that plane, that was a touchdown. Right there. Well, they continue to take a look. If it stands, four plays, 82 yards in less than two minutes, and two nifty catches while making defenders miss. And that second one, brilliance from Bell. Twice getting into the end zone and making UConn defenders flail and miss every time. That's the key. I mean, Jeff Brom's got a receiver in Bell that's got great hands, that runs good routes. But it's those yards after the catch and the effort after the catch. After further review, the, the ruling really on the field one. is confirmed. Yeah, that was something. I mean, yeah, first thing you got to do if you're a plumber, you go over there and you go, uh, hey, not a bad job. Got you the ball, the rest was yours, and, and that was a heck of a job. That's why Brian Brom, former quarterback, said he's 
in the mold of Jerry Rice. Well, maybe not. Well, that comparison. I will. Close. I will say, Jerry Rice became Jerry Rice when he augmented his yard after the, yards after the catch, and Bell does it in spades. Twenty-eight nothing, two scores for David Bell. At all idea. David Bell, four catches, 111 yards, two touchdowns, and getting it done once again for Purdue. Young man from Indianapolis. UConn with 87 yards in the air, and Bell with 111 receiving yards all by himself. So Chris Van Ekren on a kick it away. Here for Purdue with under four minutes left in this first half. Huskies will take it at the 25-yard line. Well, here's Bell up here at top of the screen, and he's going to get the ball right about here, and that's when the magic starts. Right now, it's, a, it's your basic play call. You get him the ball, then the magic starts. Then it's the yards after catch. So catch went... 25 yards that was 40 yards of Bell and the last 10 were through people and it's always unfair if you make an analogy of a college kid to a great all-timer like Jerry Rice that's not what I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say is his yards after the catch when you watch him on tape impressive emerging and doing the right things as they look out to Kevin's Clarcius freshman from Montreal Quebec and Dedrick Mackey in on the stop for Purdue. Number of Canadian players on this Connecticut roster. That goes back to Randy Etzel and the roots they established up north, going back to his time even at Syracuse. A lot of good linemen up there, too. Two yard pickup on first down. Jack Zergiotis, backup quarterback today, also from Montreal. From the 27th for the Huskies. Kojiski. Pressure coming. Who else? Carl Loftus crushing him. Incomplete. Could have been worse. Third down and coming. He's coming from where you don't expect him. You expect him off, off the defensive left side. There he is coming off the defensive right side with a roll away. There's nobody even to block. Zar Loftus. I think maybe you might want to adjust that. Yeah. And say wherever that guy is and wherever he comes, I want to get somebody on him. Just for my quarterback's sake. Back on the left. Third and eight. He's the Greek freak for a reason. No one picked him up. Ball loose. That was a flip forward. That was a that was a pass. If any if anything, wasn't that like an ill I mean uh, grounding the ball? Yep. Purdue at the recovery. Connecticut was there, in fact. Let's take a look. Well, let's see if there's a strip involved here. The way the ball came out, it was stripped. Okay. And who did it? Zarloftis coming from his left defensive end position. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by UConn. Fourth down. Timeout. Purdue, their first. Yeah, from up here, Ed, it looked like he almost like flipped the ball forward, but... Zarloftis coming off that backside. There's some symmetry there. His favorite basketball player. Yes. One more time. There's Zarloftis knocking that ball out of Krajewski's hands. Right now, Purdue's given, uh, given UConn sort of the entire menu. Kevin's Clarcius recovered for the Huskies, but Karloftis, Randy, you saw the smile on his face. Remember, he arrived from Athens, Greece at the age of 13, and just hearing him speak about how he approaches each play, down in distance, having a plan going in, timing the pre-snap count. I mean, he takes a lot of pride in the hard work and in doing it the right way, doesn't he? And the technique. As all great players do, they like technique. T.J. Sheffields. To receive for Purdue. Lost his footing. Gets by the initial wave. And he's tripped up just shy of the 35-yard line. 
Brian Keating got down there for Connecticut. But David Bell, it's been his show here in East Hartford. Yeah, it really has been. It's, it's him in crossing patterns and the combination of his crossing patterns, a relative lack of coverage, and his ability to run after the catch has been a pretty deadly, uh, what's that? Got a four-headed monster of abilities, uh, a trifecta of abilities. Combo, three-prong, <laughs> you name it. It just doesn't stop. Here's Doru. King Doru near the first down marker. Ian Swenson got to him first for Connecticut. And I'll tell you, this offensive line for Purdue has done a very nice job. Early on, there were a couple plays where you, you looked at the quarterback getting some heat, but they're doing a good job blocking up front. Off a nine-yard pickup, Doru first down and more. King Doru cutting it back inside the UConn 35-yard line. Move the sticks under two minutes left in the half. Follow the lanes. King Doru did. Just watch where he's going. When you see air like that open up, that's because that O-line is doing a great job blocking up front. Timeout. Purdue. They're second. 30 seconds. Randy Boilermakers right now with 325 total yards. They've attempted 16 rushes. Plumbers attempted 14 passes and that's not customary for a Jeff Brown team. Last year, they attempted the third fewest carries on the ground in the country. And they're trying to get back to establishing the run here in 2021. As we look at Jeff Brown, fifth year as Purdue head coach after a really solid run. Two bowl wins before that at Western Kentucky. Yeah, and as he gets more and more faith in this offensive line, I think you're going to see Purdue do a lot more of that. And they're averaging right now on the ground 6.8 yards a carry. Doru, the last big run. First and 10. Plummer off the play fake. Swenson coming. Slings it. Complete to Durham. Payne Durham to the 20. He's dragged down from behind. Luol Ugwak among those there for Connecticut. Moves into the 20. Doru again. First met by Diamond Harrell for Connecticut. Clock ticking, 113 to go in this second quarter. Well, to that point of yards per carry at 6.8 going into that play, I mean, that looked like they stopped them. That was a five yard game. Empty backfield, dump it down. And the catch made by. David Bell. Timeout. Purdue. Their third and final. 30 seconds. A lot of, lot of calm for this offense, isn't it? I mean, Jeff Brom, Brian Brom, his brother, coaching this offense, the coordinator and quarterbacks coach, but they don't seem to fluster much. No. And, and they're really focused in what they're doing. And the quarterback fits that mindset. Shaq Plummer came to Purdue because of the quarterback experience of his head coach and his brother, the offensive coordinator. Well, keep an eye on Jack Plummer with the toys he's got around him, especially Bell and then Durham. And then the way this young offensive line is starting to perform. I mean, this is only game two. So you can't get too excited, but if you're a Boilermaker fan, you've seen a lot today that's got a, got you feeling pretty positive so far. Here's Brian Brom on the right side of your screen, 35 years old, like Jeff, quarterback at Louisville in college, played three NFL games with Buffalo, 2009 and 2010. Jack Plummer, you take those two sacks when you open this game 14 or 16. Threw for over 300 yards last week against Oregon State. Third and three, Durham. First down and inside the 10, spun away by D.J. Morgan. First and goal, though, for the Boilermakers. That's one of the, one of the great values of having an effective tight end is 
when you have that in, turn, in tandem with a guy like Bell, defenses get a little softer. And when defensive backs especially get a little bit softer, that leaves room to play for a good tight end like Durham in that intermediate area. Purdue subbing in Mershon Rice. Top of your screen. From the eight on a first and goal. Purdue, Plover, looking, end zone, double coverage. Bell somehow brought it down. Waiting for the signal. No catch. In his hands, but it looked too good to be true. Well, when it comes time for film review, and you see that ball hit the ground. He, he had a chance. It was being batted around, but when that's reviewed in film, I'm pretty sure a coach is going to go, now, what were you seeing here, besides the fact that my best receiver is always open? Well, those two guys are pretty close. Miles Bell, Diamond Harrell against Bell on the coverage. Second and goal for the eight. Plummer, time, locks it again. And this time overcooks Milton Wright, who has covered tightly in the end zone. That's just a smart, smart play by Jack Plummer. I mean, that's a sign there that he gets some pretty good coaching. Because a lot of quarterbacks will keep it, keep it, pat the ball, and try to get it somewhere. And really, the, the ability to go to the next play and live to throw again is pretty good. You put it in the first row and it won't come back. Good decisions, and now he has four receivers, including Bell. From the eight again on third and goal. Looking Bell's way. Touchdown. David Bell with his third of the game, and that was the easiest. And the Boilermakers, five scores in this first half. And that speaks back to that throwing that ball away. If you don't throw it away, you try to fit it in somewhere again, you don't get a chance to do this. And Bell clearly gets possession. Ball never comes out and never moves once he grabs it. Mitchell Finneran on for another extra point after a nine play. Purdue scoring drive. Ball start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. Replay the try. Spencer Holstage on the lineup of the extra point. Now Jack Plummer, ready, we sit at the top. He is not related to Jake, despite being from Gilbert, Arizona. Of course, Jake Plummer was the star of Arizona State, later with the Cardinals. Well, I bet you get pretty rich if you got a buck every time somebody asks you that question, <laughs> which I did yesterday. He confirmed he's his own man, different family but leading the Boilermakers again into the end zone. Well, he's got a little snake in him. I know they're not related, but he doesn't mind rolling the dice and taking some chances. And look at Bell. It's not like he's wide open. That's a nice pass. There's only one spot away from the defensive back that that ball can be thrown. It's thrown right there on that left armpit, which is away from the defensive back. Great job by both ends of that pass. On the money, Snake Eyes. Bell, six for 121 and three touchdowns. And again, Randy, the first two had to evade numerous tackles. Makes a catch against tight coverage from Lucian for the score. Yeah, those numbers are a good game, much less a half. Jack Plummer, 16 for 20. And two of the incompletions were from inside the 10 going for the touchdown. Hanging with his roommate there on the sideline, Durham. Good start for those two this season. Purdue kicking away with 35 seconds to go in the second quarter. Van Ekren lets it loose at the goal line. Robert Burns right at the edge of the goal line. The ball got in there. Let's see. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, his knee right on the plane. Yeah. Well, and the ball and his knee were both. The, the plane starts. The end zone starts at the edge of that paint on the edge where his knee wasn't. I, I think that was a good call. So from the 25 in the final minute of this first half, they run the big fella, 5'10", 220, grad student Robert Burns, the transfer from Miami. Mostly on special teams last year. Out of Gulliver Prep and Coral Gables. Four-yard pickup. Run another play on second and six. Whatever you do, don't make the ball accessible to the deed. Burns upended. Jalen Graham got in there for Purdue. But that moves the chains and freezes the clock with five seconds to go. Timeout. UConn, their first. 30 seconds. Randy Luspanos, defensive coordinator, promoted to interim head coach. Randy Edsel in the school parting ways officially on Labor Day. And what an opportunity for the 50-year-olds who has the energy, he likes to say, of a 19-year-old. Please reset UCLA. the game clock to five seconds. Pittsburgh area native in his time with the Steelers. Thank you. He went to three Super Bowls. He won two rings, and look at the bling. Got to wear it on your head coaching debut. Oh, you got it. You got to do it. And I will say, if we take another shot of Lou Spanos on the sideline, that's the next center. Yes. So my guess is he's dropped a few pounds <laughs> from, when he, from when he was playing center. Blocks for Gus Ferrat in the mid-90s yeah. at Tulsa. Could be the final play of the half. Run Burns up the middle, and that will do it. Joe McFadden will kick it away for UConn. King Duru and Marcellus Moore back to receive for Purdue. Third quarter underway in East Hartford. Taken two shot of the goal line by Moore. Flag on the play. Marcellus Moore breaks a tackle. And Moore finally wrestled down before the 40, but we wait the penalty. Well, it, was that a wedge violation? You know, now you can't get two During the return, players. Illegal wedge block, receiving team, number 38 and 42. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Let's go down to Josh Martin at the start of this third quarter. Josh? Thanks, said Had a chance to talk to Coach Jeff Brom. He said that he challenged his team to start off strong. They obviously did, putting up 35 points in the first half. He said it hurts to lose Xander Horvath. Uh, but backups, King Goru and Dylan Downing did a great job stepping up. He said he's going to rotate in some players in the second half, talk to Coach Luspanos. He said he's, he's telling his team to focus on what's next, not, where, not what's behind them. All right, Josh, thanks. And great to have Josh on the broadcast. CBS Sports Network debut for the former New York Jet linebacker. Josh, welcome as Purdue. First play from scrimmage. It's Downing, stopped by Jeremy Lucien and Jackson Mitchell for Connecticut. You got O'Connell in there now at quarterback, Ed. Fifth year man, Long Grove, Illinois, coming off foot surgery. Very accurate, good passer. And Plumber's Day appears to be done. And on the slant, it's complete to TJ Sheffield. In his first game of 2021, Ian Swenson on the stop for Connecticut. And the challenge for these, these slot and wide receivers for Purdue is to do the same thing that Bell did in that first half. And it's not so much just catch the ball, but what do you do with it after you get a chance to catch the ball? First down pickup from the 24. Play fake, pump fake, Sheffield on an island. And spun away, Trey Wortham, the junior cornerback, with the stop. Let's go back to the scoring drives for Purdue. Punt on their first possession, Randy. Five for five to end the first half. Yeah, the uh, the efficiency, they, they ran four third down plays in the first half. Wow. And Bell, the big plays. 30-yard touchdown, early second. A 59-yard touchdown off a huge block from Brock Thompson. And another late in the second quarter. Downing bouncing to the outside. Dylan Downing guided out of bounds past the 45-yard line. 
And for Connecticut, it was Swenson again who got him out. Well, in the first half, it was Doru with the big chunks running the ball. A lot of that ha happening between the tackles. Downing now just senses the overflow as far as the defense goes and cuts it back and makes him pay. Dylan Downing, a couple of games at UNLV last year before transferring. He's from Carmel, Indiana. First to 10 from the 46. O'Connell on the slant complete. Milton Wright, the junior from Louisville, with the catch and wrestled down from behind. A little shaken up is Lucien for the Huskies. Jack Plummer, Randy, if you're Purdue and Jeff Brom, second start for the junior. Last year played in three games, started three games. Really couldn't ask for a better performance in that first half. No, you couldn't. That was uh, 30 minutes of nearly flawless the way that offense started. O'Connell over the middle, off the fingertips. Incomplete to the backup tight end, Kyle Biodo. Yeah, and this ball is trying to be thrown right in that space behind the linebackers in front of the defensive backs. And that's what you got to do in that spot. And he put it in a spot that you can't always throw that on a rope, though. Sometimes you got to throw that with a little touch. That gives that tight end a little bit better chance to catch it. Pressure coming. There is the catch. on the end. Oh, the first time. A little softer. And that makes it Well, the nice, nice effort getting that left hand up there, stopping it, and then gathering the ball in. So cradle the egg, only a two-yard pickup. This moves into the 39 for a third and eight. Mentioned the limited amount of third downs for Purdue. O'Connell to the sideline. It's complete. First down pickup, Mershon Rice. What a catch with coverage that was good from Jeremy Lucian. Yeah, beautiful catch here. Lucian's doing everything he should do. Rice is right there. Watch his left foot. Yep. See that thing just sort of dot in there. That's all you need. Just one. Mershon Rice, a sophomore. First down from the 22 for Purdue. Go with Downing again. And from his linebacker spot, Ian Swenson, the first together, get there for Connecticut. You know, when this Purdue football team gets into the heart of their schedule, into that Big Ten West, they're going to need this offensive line to be a big factor. And they've done a heck of a job today, sort of taking the next step, the game two step that Jeff Brom's going to need out of them. Jeff Brom spoke about everybody gunning for Wisconsin and Iowa in the west but then you get that next wave of teams northwestern minnesota o'connell to the air to the end zone incomplete overcooks it for mershon rice yeah, if i if i'm jeff brom i want my offense and my football team off people's radar as long as possible <laughs> pay attention to wisconsin Play, pay attention to everybody else in the west except for my football team we forget, after the upset of number two Ohio State three years ago in 2018, Purdue 6 and 12 since. Movement looked like on the right side of the line. It's going to move him back five yards. Offside. Defense, number 43. Five yard penalty. Third down. Jackson Mitchell offside. Who moves first? See Jackson Mitchell, the linebacker, made that little poke and move across the line of scrimmage. Smart move by Miller, immediately moving and getting the penalty on the defense. Moves them into a third and three. Four receiver set. O'Connell on the slant. Middles open. Touchdown. Purdue to begin this third quarter. And Mershon Rice couple of big catches on that scoring drive and Connecticut opting for a three-man look on the defensive line in this second half so far they're only going to rush three no pressure and no pressure equals no problem for Purdue because Rice is right there where he's supposed to be balls delivered perfectly by O'Connell 
11 plays, 90 yards. Longest drive for Purdue. Kept it on the ground. And Finneran boots through the extra point. As for this one, it's been all Purdue. 42 0. They've scored on six of their last seven drives. And right now, Huskies looking for their first points. Still, first drive coming up in the third. Taken out by Brian Bruton. And Bruton undercut. UConn begins at the 20 yard line on their first drive in this third quarter. Now, Connecticut, 0 2 coming in. Obviously, it has been a week of change. Randy Etzel announcing he'd retire after. They lost to Holy Cross last week. And the next day, Labor Day, ready, he pivots, talks to the school. They agreed to part ways mutually. So, Luz Spanos, defensive coordinator, elevated to interim head coach. His head coaching debut after a 26-year coaching career up until this point. This is Steven Krajewski, the new quarterback, in place of Jan Zergiotis getting the start today and picks up five yards. Yeah, it's sort of like the way we started out. He has some big yards from the ball. Actually, they had all of the half minute of that first time. That's they did win. They had more time of possession. Ball start. Offense number 50. Five yard penalty. Second down. Dylan Nadrowski, the left guard for Connecticut. The common theme in the early weeks in college football has been well, trouble in paradise. And today, look at some of those scores. <laughs> How about this? That's not even counting Oregon taking out Ohio State. Might have some bigger upsets this week after a pretty good series of upsets last week. Six FCS wins in week one against FBS schools. As Kajewski slings it out, Aaron Turner with the catch, the escape, but could not shake free of Kieran Douglas, who tracked him down for Purdue. Yeah, really nice persistence by the Purdue defense. You know, you don't get him the first time, but then you got a linebacker coming from the inside. You know, sometimes the first tackles miss, you expect a DB to be the guy, but that linebacker coming in from the inside was a big difference maker. Nice job by Douglas. They love his instincts. Third and 12 for UConn. Krajewski steps to the first wave of pressure. Ball. And to the second. Ball is loose. Branson Dean jarred it loose for Purdue. But the Huskies able to pounce on it, brings up fourth down. Yeah, they've got some uh, some nice skill sets on the defensive side. You, you don't always talk about skill sets with defensive players. But we've been talking a little bit about Karloftis and what he can do as a defensive lineman. A little bit of the similar there from Jack Sullivan coming off the edge, batting away the hands, coming on half the man and getting to the quarterback. Another punt for Hayden Kerr. T.J. Sheffield. Off a block at midfield. And finally tripped up by Jalen Farrell. Let's take a look at today's Geico Difference Makers. And through the air, the Boilermakers with the combo of Bell. Three touchdowns, six catches, and Plummer finding him in the right spots to make big plays. Well, both Bell and Plummer did 60 minutes of work and 30. They, they've got stats, and it would be nice for a game, but for them it was only a half. There was a pass to Durham, and then when in doubt, get the ball to number three and let him go with it, or just cuddle it into the end zone. Now Plummer off a 313-yard game against Oregon State. Passing for 245 today. And Bell just showing why. He was the Big Ten freshman of the year two years ago. Tops in the Big Ten last year receiving yards per game. Purdue. Go to the outside. Big tackle made on the perimeter. But not before Dion Burks gets to the 40-yard line of Connecticut. Now you got to think. Purdue's not going to give up on the run. I mean, they ran for over 110 yards in the first half. But they're not exactly going to just go all air all the time. They're a 60% pass team, but I expect them to do a little bit more running in the second half. Jackson Anthrop out of the backfield with the toss. 
Run down shy of the 35-yard line. Jackson Anthrop, red shirt, fifth year, in his sixth year at the program with a long history of family members went to Purdue. His brother Danny played at Purdue. His brother Drew played basketball in West Lafayette. Parents John and Jenna, Purdue grads. John played basketball in the 70s. That's pretty good. That's a little bit of a three. Uh, that's a trend. <laughs> You're going to be a Boilermaker. All righty, let's take a look. Your Big Ten storylines here in 2021. Yeah, I think where things are wide open in the West, and don't take your eyes off these Boilermakers. How about Kenneth Walker and the start he had? 264 yards, four touchdowns last week, and I don't know, where's Michigan? How about what's Michigan? <laughs> because I don't even know if they know what they are right now. Trying to find the right identity in Ann Arbor. Look to the outside. Thompson escapes a tackle. It was held up initially by Miles Bell and turned it upfield for a few more yards. Jackson Mitchell finally brought him down. And D.J. Morgan is down right now for Connecticut. They're graduate student from Norwalk, California. He took a little damage during that tackle. He's slow to get up. Take a timeout in Connecticut. That's DJ Morgan of Connecticut trying to make the tackle on the last play for the Huskies. Grad student from California. Let's take a look. Well, doing all the right things, trying to make a little meeting there at the football, but takes a shot from his fellow Husky. Morgan and Mitchell were both there. Sounds Morgan like a, took the worst like a law, law firm. They passed the bar in the nutmeg state, apparently. First and 10 for Purdue. From the UConn 25, O'Connor will throw again. Slings it. It's complete to Jack Kravak, the tight end. And he is met and dragged out of bounds at the 18-yard line. This offense being brutally efficient so far in the second half. Running the ball, short passes. King Doru lined up to O'Connell's right. Fake. And it's given to Doru. And Doru inside the 15-yard line. Off a big block from Kravak. The backup tight end, King Doru. Randy from Amarillo, Texas, last year appeared in four games. He was fairly limited after a preseason injury. But again, this game, Xander Horvath going down early for Purdue. It didn't look good. Keep an eye on him. They also lost tight end Garrett Miller in that first half. So, Boilermakers up 42 points. But it's come with a price on offense as Doru gets it once again for the Boilermakers. That's Doru's 11th. Carry over 70 yards and a lot of the credit you got to give to those guys up front. I tell you the first half his his ball carrying has been pretty imp pretty impressive the way he was going inside and getting large chunks. Or Beth, you see the boot on his left leg which would just be a huge loss if it's long term this season. Second and seven. Doru, a couple of cutbacks. Was on his feet for a time and finally shaded and brought down by Jalen Farrell, the sophomore safety, who's known for his work against the run and he showed why there. Well, he's getting an opportunity with the run game being the way it is and as efficient as Purdue's passing game is right now, they're completing 80% of their passes. 8-0. Huge. That's good. Two quarterbacks combining for that. Spoken like a true offensive lineman. <laughs> Shotgun here. O'Connell over the middle. Touchdown. Another one for Purdue. T.J. Sheffield in his season debut. And Purdue extends the lead here in East Hartford. O'Connell knew what he wanted to get. And he held it and held it. And delivered that thing right in the middle of the eight in Sheffield's chest. Taking over the slot roll, Rondell Moore drafted by the Arizona Cardinals, 49th pick in the draft. This time at Sheffield's capping a nine-play drive for his first career touchdown. 
And Mitchell Finneran on for another extra point. Flag. See what the flag is on the extra point. Came in pretty fast. Not sure if they just didn't line up offsides. Added to the added to the kick. Before the ball was snapped, delay of game, defense, penalty is half the distance to the goal. Replay the try. Penalty on Connecticut, but let's do it one more time. Except we'll do it this time from the one and a half yard line. Boom. But that's a nine play 54 yard drive in a little over four minutes. Go back to the first half. Purdue has scored on seven consecutive drives. It's been a tough day. Lou Spanos, interim head coach. Penalty is declined. We replay the try. And still calling the plays for the Connecticut defense. Yeah, they've been brutally efficient. And they've only had one punt. So one punt, 80% completions, running the ball. That's how it gets ugly. Was that a little chew? <laughs> Brom had working in his cheek there when he was in San Diego. Well, he did play baseball, too. Minor league career in the Indians organization. Burlington, North Carolina. Watertown, New York. Jeff Brom, you're number five now, leading the Purdue program. Bruton and Burns to receive for Connecticut. Bruton off for the fair catch here for the Huskies. Let's go back to New York Studios for an update. Guys, Toledo down 8 to Notre Dame, but Bryant Kolbeck with his fourth quarter touchdown run. They failed on the two-point conversion, but they trail 24-22 in the fourth at South Bend. All right, Prince Dover, thanks. So Krajewski back onto the field with the UConn offense. Randy Cross looking for their first points. They were shut out at Fresno State week zero. And the loss to FCS Holy Cross last week. Play fake. Krajewski looking deep. Was hit as he throws. And Gill Wobbly was out of bounds. Jack Sullivan brought it against Krajewski for Purdue. Well, Jack Sullivan does a really nice job. Coming off the edge, just getting right into the quarterback's Krajewski's kitchen. I mean, the, the scoring threat that UConn had was that missed 50 yard field goal. Yep. And outside of that, they've held the ball a good bit, but they haven't finished drives. Krajewski again, and in behind, incomplete to Cameron Harrison. George Karloftis likely done for the afternoon, but inserting his will from the Purdue defensive line. Man, the way he normally does, and that's, if he go at him, he's gonna make plays like that. If you go away from him, he's gonna catch you. And if you drop back to pass, he will have some interaction with your quarterback, pretty much guaranteed. Four tackles today, haven't seen him yet since halftime. is right. in trouble. And got it away. Keelan Marion up the seam with the catch. Sanusi Kane brought him down for Purdue. Well, you hold the ball this long, you're going to see some pressure. Good toughness by Krajewski getting, uh, getting smacked around a little bit. Another punt coming up for Hayden Kerr. Three straight, three and outs. For Connecticut and TJ Sheffield back to receive for the Boilermakers. Takes a Huskies bounce. And Brian Keating and company will doubt it just past the 21. Is it too early to talk Heisman? No. Randy's Heisman hopefuls. Never. How about Corral out of Ole Miss and what he put on the field Monday night? You got to love also what the young quarterback Bryce Young did. Jack Cohen for Notre Dame. Brett Stover was just talking about him in that game with Toledo. And Kenneth Walker, 264 yards and four touchdowns. I want to learn that name. He's always got to be a non-quarterback in there somewhere. No doubt. 
New quarterback for Purdue is Austin Burton. Now first down, slings it to the outside where Andrew Sawinski makes the grab. Miles Bell with the tackle for Connecticut. The senior from Newton, Massachusetts. Nice trip back with Purdue to New England here today. Yeah, was that UCLA? That's a heck of a transfer. Yes. That gets the frequent flyer miles. <laughs> Gold, platinum, on the money throw here. Marcellus Moore, the freshman, with the catch. Now past the 40-yard line, Diamond Harrell with the tackle for Connecticut. So a chance for Jeff Brom to work in his third stringers right now with a 49-0 lead here on the road. And the key when you're having this kind of an offensive day is your job as a backup, no drop-off. You want the same kind of quality of execution. Burton on the keeper. Now for Purdue, you look at what's ahead. Notre Dame is coming up. Jeff Brom speaking about making the schedule and really trying to challenge his group with Power 5 competition. That was the big theme in terms of making this schedule. And, of course, navigating the Big Ten West. Last year winning their first two games, lost their last four in a shortened season. Burton chased, and Burton scampers out of bounds into the UConn sideline. Yeah, that's a smart move by scheduling Power 5 type teams. And, and that's something, it's the athletic director, it's the head coach, but it's also kind of pressing because you're basically doing what everyone's going to have to go to in the future. There, there aren't going to be very many of these homecoming games like Mercer at Alabama. No. You won't see many of those games. It's going to be Power 5 on Power 5. And Purdue's already doing it. Third and 11 here for the Boilermakers. Look at their road games this year at Notre Dame, at Iowa, at Nebraska, at Ohio State. Delay, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Out of sync right there, the offensive line. Yeah, anytime you get a delay a game like that, it's um, they're being nice when they don't call the quarterback's name and number out. Yeah. Because that's usually where they... The blame would lie. Of course, the quarterback could probably tell you, you know, they got the play in awful late. How fast <laughs> am I supposed to do this? Final minute of this third quarter. Burden to throw. It's Downing. Bumped and finally pushed out of bounds by Miles Bell. Dylan Downing. Walk on this year. Coming in from Nevada, Las Vegas. And the stop for Connecticut, and Purdue forced to punt. Yeah, you can see a lot of really nice play design in what Purdue wants to do. And the, the Brahms, Jeff and Brian, just, just doing a really nice job of scheming in this offense. And that'll pay off and pay off big time here later on as they get into this Big Ten West schedule. Randy, second punt for Jack Ansel. Keelan Marion back for Connecticut. Wobbly. Shallow kick scooped up by Marion, just shy of the 30-yard line. Nope. The one big zinger in the Big Ten today. Ohio State losing at the horseshoe against Oregon by seven. Elsewhere, Illinois. Virginia 42-14 with the victory. Yeah, not too much in the way of surprises besides that. I mean, Illinois losing to UTSA. Yeah, was a was a shocker without a doubt, and we'll still see what Washington can do against Michigan in the Big House. Minnesota just good enough to beat Miami of Ohio today as Kevin Mensa hit hard past the 30 and knocked down. That's the end of the third quarter. Just 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks here in 2021. Week to the college football season, and it's been all Purdue to say the least. A 49 nothing lead. At Connecticut. Ed Cohen, Randy Cross, Josh Martin on the sideline, our entire CBS Sports Network crew. They're on 9 11 21. And Aaron Turner with the catch for Connecticut. And Randy, obviously a day where you think about what happened 20 years ago. You never forget, you remember the heroes, those who gave their lives to help save the lives of so many. 
And obviously, too, you think about the power of sport and what they did for us in coming back from that time 20 years ago. Well, was there a more poignant moment than Yankee Stadium? That game back, the way that city reacted. I mean, I was doing the NFL today 20 years ago, and I remember we couldn't come to New York, and then when we did get a chance to come back, it was such a privilege to be around the people of New York and their resiliency and their toughness and just the way they, they handled everything. Because it was it was incredible to see. 20 years ago, and we're not far. About two hours right now from New York City here in East Hartford. Without traffic. Without traffic. That will never change. <laughs> 95, 91, you name it. Route 84. But you harken back to what that time was in our country. Beginning of the Commander in Chief Trophy Series, Air Force leading Navy in Annapolis 7 3. That game right now on CBS. And a special game on a noteworthy day on the calendar here in 2021. Yeah, absolutely. Good to, good to see that one close. Uh, no doubt a tough physical battle. Well, this guy has felt it. Steven Krajewski. And look who made the stop. Yanni Karloftis, younger brother of George, graduated high school early. I mean, think about it if you're Jeff Brown. He's a freshman freshman. Yeah. Legit. You have two players from Greece of this caliber in West Lafayette, Indiana, right on your doorstep at Purdue. Up the gut, the big guy, Robert Burns. And, and, the, little, and the little brother is a linebacker. Older brother, defensive end, has really sort of matured into one heck of a player. Yanni is also six foot four, but he's about 215 pounds. Stoppage on the field, Jamari Brown. Down for Purdue. Jamari Brown of Purdue, walking off at his own strength and the tackle here against Burns. Yep, looks like he caught a back of the heel right under the chin. Connecticut, a first and ten from the Purdue 42. Kind of punch it in for the first time today. They run Bruden around. Krajewski, man open, through the hands, incomplete. Jay Rose, the veteran tight end. There's a flag on the play. Holding. Defense, number 27. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's the redshirt freshman, Anthony Rumpf. Right out of the break is where that usually happens, and that was a hold with each hand and almost an unbelievable catch on that throw. How would you assess? Passing of Krajewski, that one was on the money. He's had some that have been there, others that haven't. Yeah, he has. Uh, hasn't had the greatest protection at times, but you'd expect that against this defense. There was movement all over the line. The ball, the ball was not ball. ready for play. We will replay first down. Ryan Vandermark was saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Krajewski, sophomore from Georgia. Quarterbacks coach Mike Moisinko, who calls the plays for the Connecticut offense, said loves the competitiveness. Ran over everybody in the spring, understands all aspects of the offense. They go to him in week two, third game for UConn. And the ground game still slow to get going for the Huskies. 108 yards on the ground here today and nothing doing that time for Nate Carter, the freshman from the Rochester area of upstate New York. And Krajewski so far today, 11 of 18 for 91 yards. And the last time he started was 2017 as a senior in high school at Colquitt County High School in the state championship game. It's a lot of waiting around. Oh, that's a lot. That's patience there. There he is now. 
Krajewski sprinting, first down, and a little bit more to the 20-yard line. So this is one of the reasons they went to him, what he can do with his feet. And he has shown some, some nice stuff. I mean, there are some, some building blocks in place for Luis Spanos and his staff. It's not going to lie to you. It's not going to be an easy year. It's going to be some tough, some tough stuff they're going to have to take, but they got to take their shots when they get them. At the 20. Krajewski with time, walks it in stride. Ball is dropped. Jace Medlock in the right spot, could not haul it in. Remember earlier in the game we talked about a ball being thrown on the line and not much touch? How about the touch on that one? I mean, he put that one in the perfect spot. He knows it. And the more he plays, the, the less he'll do of that reaction. Never really pays off to be showing up your guy. See if Mensa and the Huskies can pay it off. Player lost his helmet. That was Kane for Purdue. So he's going to have to come off as Mensa picks up a couple. Demarcus Mitchell finally with the tackle for the Boilermakers. Not a bad little drive going right now for UConn. Earlier they had a 50-yard field goal miss. Other than that, they haven't really sniffed the red zone much. Stacking trips. Left slot. Krajewski looking that way. Dumps it. Catch made at the 15. That's Matt. Jay Rose. Not enough for the first down. Five yards short. At this point, at this, at this point, they're going to go. Good job by Krajewski just kind of staring that heat, heat down, staring the pass rush. Of course, he wasn't probably looking at the pass rush because quarterbacks don't admit to doing that. <laughs> But he hung in there. He sensed it very well and held it to the last microsecond. Let's see what they can dial up here. Four wide with Mensa in the backfield. Krajewski hit as he throws. Incomplete. And boy, was he hit. Yeah, he was hit. I mean... College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Home Depot. How doers get more done by Werner. Step up your game with Werner Letter. And by Kid Cat. Have a break. Have a Kid Cat. Look at the Connecticut State Capitol to our west. They're due leading this one 49-0. Let's revisit the keys to the game, Randy Cross. Yep, zero turnovers. Only 20 penalty yards, but about 600 yards of offense so far. And stay on the field, only 20, 123 rushing yards, and they've punted six times. Tough day at the office, the home office. Austin Burton, still the quarterback, and a flag on the play. Ball loose, and they whistle it down. Check the penalty. Is that good? Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 25. 10-yard penalty. First down. That's Marcellus Moore with the penalty for Purdue. Now the Boilermakers... Randy, you alluded to it, 516 total yards, including 359 in the air. Three quarterbacks, a combined 28 of 34, Plummer, O'Connell, and now Burton. This is Burton here to the outside. It's complete. Let's go back to New York. Brent Stover in the studio. Guys, Toledo looking for a massive upset here. Daquan Finn, a 26-yard touchdown run late. They lead 20 by 75 yard drop. Come to Michael Mayer, two-point inversion, good. I threw with him left. Oh, thank you, Brett. Scorch in the Midwest today, reverberating around the country. But one of your Heisman hopefuls, Jack Cohn, has the Fighting Irish up late. Let's take a look at the Purdue schedule because next week it's a showdown with the Fighting Irish in 
South Bend. Well, if they found Toledo tough, they're going to be nuts about Purdue. Because I guarantee you there's a better offense coming into South Bend than they saw today. Third and five for the Boilermakers. Running back down and picks up the blitz. Burton stumbling. Has the first down. And finally wrestled down. Shy of the 25-yard line. Miles Bell led the convoy for Connecticut with help from Jackson Mitchell. Burton getting his game legs underneath him a little bit. Almost like sea legs. <laughs> I like that. Not too far from the coast. No. Nah. So Burton guides the offense to another first down. I just saw that graphic. 26 first downs picked up by the Boilermakers. Downing. Held up. Past the 30. Durante Jones. It's been a quiet day for the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. But they believe he has the makings to be a real leader of this defense now and in the future. Yeah, nice play, making a play like that. That's why the, the ability to fill and guarantee a tackle. Four-yard pickup, stick with the ground, and Downing pushing the pile to the 34 for Purdue. Eric Watts, new Connecticut welcome back from injury, in on the stop. That's UConn defense. Trying to bring down Downing. And it's very close. Right near the 36. Jordan Morrison was there, but good enough for a first down. Yeah, had to, had to get to the 36, and he just did get there. Talking about the NCAA headlines here. Who can crack the top five? How about who's dropping out of the top five? That would be Ohio State for sure. AM was getting a heck of a test, too. Set up the screen between the hash marks. Alex Maxwell brought down at the 45. And Randy, of course, that last one passing away. Sam Bam Cunningham earlier this week. Yeah, just an amazing, amazing football player. And people forget, you know, when SC went to Alabama, mm. there were no black players on the Crimson Tide roster. And Bear Bryant saw Sam Cunningham and a bunch of other really good Trojans come in there and just wear them out. I mean, that was 1970 wow. that he did that. And had a fabulous career with the New England Patriots. Had those Rose Bowl games where it seemed like he scored, you know, jumped over, jumped over the top about four times for touchdowns. Just a crazy, crazy good running back. He was in my College Football Hall of Fame class. In fact, it was at the Fiesta Bowl where UConn played Oklahoma when they sort of introduced our class. I didn't get a chance to be there at the game, but Sam was an amazing man. 2011, you went into the College Football Hall of Fame, Randy. And growing up in California, I mean, you went to the school across town, but you certainly... You know the history, and you, you recognize just what it meant to the sport, what he did. Oh, yeah, you definitely did. And, and you know, John McKay. Time out on the field. You want to talk about hoarding talent. What he had in the early 70s at USC. Look out. It was unfair. We talk about a crosstown rivalry. Oh, yeah. Not, they're not all SC, UCLA. How about a little Houston Rice? <laughs> and Houston, of course, big news earlier this week. On a big 12, new quarterback for Purdue is number one, Michael Olimo. And Purdue, in terms of their quarterbacks, have gone four deep here today, and none of them are named Brown. Jeff, the head coach, Brian, his brother, the offensive coordinator, NFL veterans, stars at Louisville. Good job by Jordan Morrison there, forcing on that last play. Alimo feels the pressure, and he's finally taken down. Travis Jones with the sack. Travis Jones, he's had a physical transformation, Randy. 
has slimmed down. He's cut his body fat as a freshman, weighed close to 360. He's now down to around 330. Bill, what they're doing these days with the strength, conditioning, and nutrition at the college level, I mean, it used to be the sort of the area of the pros. They, they, they really developed guys at that level. Not anymore. That starts right out of high school. Travis Jones from New Haven. Keelan Marion to receive the punt at the 15 for Connecticut. And David Bell putting his stamp on this game in the first half. Well, he does some amazing work and really nice routes that he runs. Very nice hands, but it's when he gets the ball in his hands and can kind of create is where he gets very, very special. Rondo Moore now at the Arizona Cardinals getting ready for his NFL debut with David Bell. I mean, 20 career games, what he's been able to do, 18 career touchdowns. You lead the Big Ten in receiving yards as a sophomore. And just get the set, he's not done. Randy, he had a 30-yard touchdown where he went from one sideline to the other, breaking tackles. 59-yard score, and then with a pass right on the money, the eight-yard touchdown just before the half in the final minute of that second quarter. Yeah, of those touchdowns, my favorite was probably the one on the crossing pattern where he caught the ball just inside the 40 and took it the rest of the way, the 59-yarder, where he stretched in and just got it inside that pylon. Aaron Turner is wrestled down near the 24. Connecticut Jacob Wahlberg, sophomore from Michigan, linebacker there to make the stop for Purdue. Bell's going to see double teams. Has already in his career, and yet what he's able to do when covered might be what makes him as impressive as he is. That's what the coaches really feel is his biggest asset. Well, I have no doubt. Notre Dame and Brian Kelly will spend a lot of time looking at him after their 32-29 win over Toledo today, getting ready for Purdue next week. The great escape in South Bend. Fourth and four here. And Connecticut will bring on the punt team. Tough three weeks to begin the season for UConn. Obviously, the shutout at the hands of Fresno State in Week Zero and the loss against Holy Cross last week. FCS victory for the Crusaders. Their first in 19 years. Aiden Kerr on the punt for Connecticut. Big tackle on special teams by Brian Keating, one of the captains for Connecticut. Well, it's been a tough couple of weeks as well, Randy, for Lou Spanos. Last Thursday, his father, George, passed away from COVID-19. He was buried this past Tuesday down in South Carolina. Lou couldn't make it down there, but he spoke about his father's spirit earlier today, and obviously condolences to the Spanos family, what's been a really hard couple of weeks. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it puts all the uh, struggles football-wise into proper perspective, that's for sure. Purdue gets the ball back. It's downing once again. Luis Banos, we spoke to offensive coordinator Frank Joffrey. He said, I love that dude. He's a great guy. He just has this wonderful spirit about him. He had no voice today, by the way, because of the last couple of days, yeah. the energy, the excitement, and obviously his first game now as interim head coach. Well, him as an interim head coach it was a good move, and athletic director David Benedict has got a good amount of time here to make the right decision as to what to do with his football program and the head coaching position, because you look down the road, you know, they get Army next week up in West Point, then they come back here at home for Injury Wyoming. Timeout. Yeah, it's not going to get significantly easier, but there are some teams on that schedule. Well, not named Clemson and UCF and Houston that, you know, are gettable for this team. Player down for Purdue. They're in the final 151 of this one at Connecticut. And the Boilermakers 
looking to put their stamp on a shutout here on the road. Stretching that calf, that's usually a sign maybe you're getting a little cramps working. Yeah, it's Dylan Downing, the running back. Remember Xander Horvath going down in the first half. Their top running back, they lose Garrett Miller, the tight end. And the last thing you need if you're the Boilermakers, even with a big victory on the road, is more bodies to go down this early in the season. Yeah, Horvath, very valuable piece of this offense. Big, physical, can catch, willing to block. Um, they're going to have a hard time replacing him. They had some guys come in and do some really nice jobs. But he'll be, he'll be difficult to replace. Marcellus Moore gets the handoff, and he is dropped. Big tackle coming across for Connecticut. Desmond Fogel, the reserve linebacker, seeing some snaps late in this one, and that forces Purdue to punt here with 125 to go. Yeah, that was a nice sort of blur coming out of the middle of that defense, coming off, scraping all the way to the outside for that tackle. Brendan Kropsev on to put it away for Purdue. You know, Jeff Brom rolled the dice last week. There was a fake field goal played out of the Wildcat. They tried to show some trickery at the line, but UConn not fooled. And the punt picked up by the freshman Marion, and he is quickly guided out with under a minute to go. Last week, it was all about the upsets FCS over FBS. Obviously, UConn felt that against Holy Cross. But Jeff Brown said, Randy, he told his Purdue team about these scores. Don't take Connecticut lightly this week. Yeah. Yeah. As it was easy to show that to your team and say, look, it can happen. And they did a really nice job of handling that. Now, also, Oregon taking out Ohio State now on top of all those. Kind of a big deal. And to do it on the road. On, yeah, at Ohio State. Kurczewski hit as he throws. Wobbler intercepted here in the final minute of the game. Zane Green, the safety, with the pick for Purdue. And the Boilermakers on the verge of the shutout. Their first since September 17th of 2011, nearly 10 years to the day when they beat Southeast Missouri 59 to nothing. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to keep track of Jeff Brom and these Boilermakers as this season progresses. Obviously, they've got a monster date next week in South Bend, but... It still will be fun to see how they fare in the Big Ten West because I think they're going to be right there at the end. Boilermakers to 2 0. Connecticut still seeking its first win since 2019 after sitting out last season. Plummer was as efficient as it gets 16 for 20. Didn't play in the second half, and obviously, Bell, what'd you call him, Randy? The Bell Cow? <laughs> He for was. good reason. Yeah, he was. He he was all they needed and then some. Jack, not Jake Plummer. Part of this Purdue victory. And Lou Spanos will never forget that first day at 26-year coaching career as head coach. But UConn shut out for the second time in three weeks to begin the season.